Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Here's a clip from the Deal Book Summit with Andrew Sorkin, the New York Times Deal Book Summit. This is just a short clip of it. This is part of the famous clip where Elon Musk tells his advertisers on formerly known as Twitter as X to F themselves, don't advertise. But this is a different clip that goes on about the perception of goodness and how companies, these big multinationals, powerful people, politicians, Washington comes to mind, pretend like they're the epitome, the virtue signaling of goodness, or actually they're doing evil. And that's just, that's worse than evil in a lot of ways. Let's listen to what Elon Musk has to say. This clip is really short. AI has been very specific, right? There's not a let, let the chips fall where they may approach to those businesses, I don't think. No, we focus on making the best products. And, and, and Tesla has gotten to where it's gotten with no advertising at all. I understand that. Tesla currently sells uh, two, twice as much uh, in terms of electric vehicles as the rest of uh, electric car makers in, in the United States combined. Tesla is now, we'll tell you about virtual signaling and the perception of goodness. President Biden's all about the new green energy and cars and windmills and solar panels. And Elon Musk, the Tesla company, sells twice as many electric vehicles as all the rest of the electric vehicles made in the country times two. He's twice as big as all of them put together. They had a summit, was it about two months ago? at the White House for the electric car manufacturers. President Biden didn't even invite Elon Musk or a representative from Tesla to appear at this conference. So this is the perception of goodness. Look what I'm doing for the environment and so-called global warming. Meanwhile, the individual is personally responsible for making most electric cars in the United States by far. He has twice as many as all of them put together is not invited. That's the perception of goodness. That's really evil. He's absolutely right. And he says so at the end. It's just amazing to me. Let's uh, listen on. Done more to help the environment than uh, all other companies combined. It would be fair to say that, therefore, as a leader of the company, I've done more for the environment than everyone else, any single human on Earth. How do you feel about that? No, no, I, but, no, how do personally. I feel about that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking you personally how you feel about that, because this goes, we're talking about power and influence and... I'm and saying, I'm saying what, I, what, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. The reality of goodness, not the perception of it. And there it lies, but in plain English, the perception of goodness, but not truly goodness, evil. And frankly, I think we're all sick of it. And he's probably sick of it more than anybody in the United States from the crap that he gets. Let's listen to the rest. And what I see all over the place is people who care about looking good while doing evil. Fuck them. Exactly right. F them. He's had enough. He's had enough. I consider Elon Musk to be the modern version of Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes had his... That is mental illnesses, and I'm not saying Elon Musk has mental illness. But he's a unique individual, just like Howard Hughes, a brilliant mind. Howard Hughes was self-taught engineer. Ever see the movie Aviator? It's, a, it's really, really well made. That talks about how Howard Hughes goes through his phobias and some of his mental problems. And he got a lot of grief, too. Got brought up on the Senate subcommittee saying he stole a lot of money during the war, World War II, with his airplane companies. And they just went after him relentlessly because he told them F you. I consider Elon Musk to be the modern version of what I call the Howard Hughes syndrome, where all of government and people that you don't kiss their ring and kiss their ass come after you to destroy you. And he's had enough. And I really don't blame him. But that's the thing. The perception of goodness. Can you imagine taking a police officer that died two or three days after the January 6th riot 
of natural causes and had nothing to do with the riot, put into that individual's coffin and the rotunda on display as a martyr, and then having Democrats kneel down? You've got to be kidding me. The perception of good. Well, how could you be? It's, it's, we're mourning a death of a police officer. Yeah, but they lied and said he died because of January 6th. I believe he died of a stroke of natural causes. And I feel bad for him and his family. That's a different issue. The perception of goodness while you're doing evil. The perception of goodness is bringing about your political opponent and multiple indictments just to get rid of him because you're getting rid of the big bad wolf. We Meanwhile, you're the one that's evil. People are sick of it. Sick of it. I know I am, and I know Elon Musk is, and I'm sure we're not alone. It's sick to death of it. There are all these things they say, all these things they do. We used it from the trans issue to uh, non-binary people, drag shows for children. The list is endless. The perception of goodness, virtue signaling. Meanwhile, you're doing bad. And you know it too, but you do it anyway because it gets you brownie points and gets you elected or makes you a lot of money in the case of multinational corporations. It's sickening and it's disgusting. It's on a whole different level than hypocrite. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Elon Musk has finally spoke out. This was, this was groundbreaking stuff that he did in this interview. Groundbreaking stuff. The lines have been drawn. The battle lines have been drawn. One side is going to win. And the side that wins with the ones that have the most support from the American people. Which side are you on? Until the next time, goodbye and good luck. Mm -hmm.